your standards will constantly be tested. Something or someone will come into your life and they are not fully what you want and you'll find yourself trying to convince yourself to accept it. Let's get into the video. Hello intentional woman, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayani Mei and in this video I'll be sharing with you how you can raise your standards in five easy steps so that you never settle for less. And the first one is a deeper understanding of what standard actually means. So standards are what you expect of yourself and what you expect from the people in your life or from anybody who wants to come into your life. It's the barest minimum of whatever behavior or experience you're comfortable entertaining. So when you set a standard for others, you are saying, I expect this from the people in my life. So if you want to come in and be a part of it, if you want to be in my presence, if you want to experience me, you must be this type of person. And this is not just specific to dating, it's for everybody. An example is in friendship. You could set a standard and say that for anybody to be your friend, they have to be empathetic, compassionate, intelligent, and so on and so on. Now, when you set a standard for yourself, you are saying this is what I expect of myself and this includes your behavior, your habits and your experiences. Things like how you handle conflict, how you conduct yourself in social settings, where you make your hair, where you make your nails, how you travel, your appearance, where you shop, all of these things are a part of your standards and you have to understand that your standard is about you. I keep saying standard standards, I'm sorry. <laughs> You have to understand it's about you. You cannot force it on anybody. If you set a standard and say that you want to be with a man who is a provider and a protector, and then a man who is not much of a provider and a protector hovers around your life, you should not force him to become a provider because he may do it one or two times to please you or to get something from you and then he will go back to his default because that's not who he is. Your job is to assess the man and say, oh no, you don't meet my standards instead of trying to force him to become something that you want. And to be honest, in some ways, the standards that you set for yourself can be an indication of how you see yourself, your self-worth. Because if you choose to date a man who treats you horribly or who is emotionally unavailable, you are essentially saying that you're not deserving of an emotionally available man. So be honest with yourself. Do you believe, and I mean completely and truly believe, that you are deserving of the standards you want to set for yourself or the ones you've already set for yourself? because you want your standards to mean something. You don't want them to just be empty words because a lot of women set standards and they end up not enforcing it because deep down, they don't believe they are worthy of these things. So be clear about your self-worth and what you truly and completely believe you deserve. You can start with the simple ones like, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. I deserve to have love in my life. I deserve success in my life. I deserve to live a life of purpose. Now the second step is for you to be specific with your standards. Simply saying, I want to raise my standards is too vague. So you want to change that to, I want to raise my standards in this particular area. An example could be, I want to raise my standards in my dating life, in my appearance, in my habits, my fitness routine. Get very specific with it. Everything about your life can be broken into seven key areas, and that's relationship, finances, academic, business, or career, emotional well-being, mental health, physical, which is a combination of your health and appearance, and then your spiritual life. So choose any of these areas and flesh out what you expect of yourself and others in that area. I'll use my spiritual life as an example. I have set the standard of praying every day, reading the Bible every day, and choosing one day a week where I can fast because I want to draw closer to God. Now my standard and expectation of any man coming into my life in regard to this same area is that he must be a Bible-believing Christian, a prayerful man, so that we 
we can pray together and he can also pray for me. He must be somebody I can discuss my spiritual needs with without shame or without feeling like I'm going to be judged or dismissed. And if you notice, I keep using the word must because these things are non-negotiable. From what I just shared with you, you can see that there is nothing vague about it. It is very specific. So do the same for yourself. Now, the third step is really <laughs> is a difficult one, but it's very necessary if you truly want to raise your standards. And that's for you to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to ask yourself, all these things that I am expecting of others, am I this type of person to other people? And the experiences you're demanding others to give you, are you able to give these experiences to yourself? The reason why this is so important is because it is really easy to demand of others what you are already offering them. If you know for a fact that you are a kind person, compassionate, loving, a giver, it becomes very easy to demand the same of others because it's what you will give to them if they are in your life because it'll be so terrible for you to be an amazing person and then somebody comes into your life and treats you horribly. And that's why knowing your self-worth is key because when you know your self-worth, you can easily say, oh no, I cannot be this wonderful person to you and you think it is okay to treat me horribly. Please get out of my life. I don't want you in my life because you're speaking from a place of absolute confidence in your self-worth. So if you say you want an emotionally available man, you need to ask yourself, are you an emotionally available person? If you say you want your friend to be intelligent, are you an intelligent person? You have to know the value that you bring to other people's lives. Now that's for your expectations of people. Let's talk about experiences. Let's say that you've set a standard that no man can ever take you to a fast food restaurant on a first date. Then you cannot keep taking yourself on a solo date to a fast food joint or make a fast food joint the only place that you and your girlfriends hang out in. Because if you keep doing this, a man can pop into your life and tell you, let's go to a fast food joint on a first date. And you end up saying yes, because that's what you're used to. You'll keep settling and accepting low value experiences. However, if you've decided no more fast food joint for you, and then you start taking yourself to upscale restaurants, you're dining in really nice places, if a man comes into your life and tells you, I would like to take you out, and you say, where? And they say, oh, there's a fast food joint down the road. You will say no so fast, <laughs> his head will spin. The same thing goes for traveling. If you've been flying and buying your tickets by yourself, and then a man pops into your life and you say, oh, I'm traveling, and he says, oh, I'll give you money for a bus ticket, you will laugh him out of your life because you'll be like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I only fly. But on the other hand, if you were traveling and the man said, oh, you're flying economy, you know what? Let's get you a business class ticket. You would accept that because he's exceeding your standards and that's something you crave, that's something you want. Being brutally honest with yourself in this way is not so that you lower your standards, oh no. It is so that you have a better idea of qualities you want to develop in yourself and how you want to go about upgrading your life and your experiences so that when somebody comes into your life, they either meet you where you are or they exceed your standards. Not that they come into your life and they try to drag you back to where you're coming from. Now the fourth step, and that's for you to have the courage to say no. This is where the work is. Everything about your standards hinges on this particular step because you need to have the courage to say no to people and experiences that do not completely meet your standards. Your standards will constantly be tested. Something or someone will come into your life and they are not fully what you want and you'll find yourself trying to convince yourself to accept it. It could be that you meet a man and he has certain qualities, but then again, he's lacking key qualities too. You'll find yourself rationalizing and trying to convince yourself that you can live without those qualities. My standards are 
always tested in this way. I will meet a man, but something will be missing or he will have a quality that is a deal breaker for me. The recent one was that he's an amazing guy, but he's a smoker. And I've talked about it on this channel that smoking is a deal breaker for me. And this is a safe place, so I'll tell you the truth. I'm not gonna lie. I try to convince myself that it's just smoking. It's not that bad. But something in me was still saying, mm -mm, this is not it, this is not it. And what really helped me say no was reminding myself of what it was like dating a smoker because I've done that before and I did not like it. When he would visit, he would smoke. It would soak into my wig, my clothing. I hated that experience. So reminding myself of that really helped me quickly shed all that infatuation and fantasy that I had of what our lives could be. I will not lie, it was painful, but I had to dig deep to find that courage to say no. That is why knowing your self-worth is so important. I'll keep saying that because it can really help you find that courage to say no. When you know you deserve better, it's easy to say no. But one thing I found out that is so amazing is that the more you say no to experiences and people that do not completely meet your standards, the more you reaffirm that you are worthy of better. I'm telling you, it's so wonderful. It's a huge boost to your self-worth. And that's why the final step, step five, is so important. And that is for you to have an abundance mindset. Because what sometimes makes us settle is the fear that nothing better will come along. The fear that if you say no to this man, you will not find another person. The fear that if you say no to this job or this experience, you will never find something better. And you cannot have that mindset. It doesn't help you continue to raise your standards. If you've ever dated a man and thought to yourself, this is the best man in the world. I don't think I'll ever find a better person. But then you break up and somewhere, somehow, you meet an even better man. And you are amazed that that's even possible. That's because the world is filled with abundance. So you just have to bring that intention to other areas of your life that you've set certain standards. You need to be patient and have faith that something better will come because what's in front of you is not what you truly want. You cannot be desperate because desperation can make you settle for what's less than. Another thing you have to do to develop an abundance mindset is to shed the at least mindset. Once you start using the word at least, just know you're settling. Let's say you want a job that pays 200,000 Naira and you know that with your qualifications, you should be paid that amount. But then a job comes that pays 100K and you say at least it's offering something. You're settling. And with what I shared with you about the guy, I could have said to myself, well, at least it's smoking. And what would that mean? That means I would have been settling because it's not what I truly want. It's either it is what you want or you let it go. So having an abundance mindset is key. You have to believe, completely believe that if you reject something, Yahweh or whatever higher power you believe in will bring something even better along your way. And he always does because I don't know how it happens. You keep rejecting something and you keep attracting better because as you're rejecting and saying no to certain things, you're also working on yourself to upgrade your life and your experiences. So you're leveling up until you find yourself in certain rooms and you are amazed. I'm telling you, it is wonderful. My most comforting Bible verse is the one that says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Do you know what that means? It means that whatever you want is right here on earth. It belongs to him. And when you ask him and it is in accordance with his will, he will connect you to it. So keep rejecting low value experiences and low value people. You deserve better. And that's it for today's video, ladies. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Share them with me in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel. Trust me, you'll love it here. As always, ladies, be kind to yourself. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.